Hi, this is Grant. I just wanted to show you around the testamentary trust so you can have a look. This is the big one. This is the moat. You can see I've got all the documents here. Um, I've got, what I've done is I've ticked the last will and testament so that um, I haven't done a testamentary trust. I just want to show you the difference. So for example, with the, just the last will and testament, we've got the testator here being John Smith. Obviously make sure you put your advisor details in there. Uh, you've got the executor, Max Smith is the son. There's no joint, otherwise you show there. Successor executor is the uh, daughter uh, and also the um, spouse of uh, John. So they're sharing second executorship duties. There's actually a, a third executor. So you can start to, to see, we're really starting to build. We've decided to just keep it after the second successor or the third executor line, we'll just do that. Now we go into binding vote. That's okay. So that's between these two. If it ends up with those, who actually ends up with the, the power? Now we go into specific gifts um, and we start looking around. So here we've got personal effects and clothing. The executive is going to share it between the beneficiaries. So we go, yes, it's going to be shared. If it's not going to be shared, then we go, no. You'll see here Max Smith, who's the son. I've just chosen Max. That's why it's really important getting the common parties there. Max, and we've got an investment property call. Now notice how there's no ability to do a testamentary trust there, even though Max has a son, Ben, and also Billy Smith. So what I want to do now is I'm just going to show you how we easily we can change with this system. I'm just going to go in the documents. I'm actually going to go from here, last will, to last will and testamentary trust. Now let's go through, obviously that's going to change Max and all that. Now I go back, um, Sally Smith, um, she gets personal effects and clothing. Now, see how this pops up. Do you want to go into a testamentary trust? We go, no. But Max, we've got, well, do we want to go into a testamentary trust? We go, yes. Is the gift automatically transferred into the testamentary trust? So we can either transfer it, make it go in there. But look, Max is a smart boy. He's got his kids. You know, he may not want it to go into a testamentary trust investment property in Coolum. So we'll go um, no there. We could have gone yes, but we'll go no there. So then the next question, because our testamentary trusts are built for bloodline. So the spouse is obviously not the bloodline. Max is obviously the child of John, um, and he's an adult child at age 40. Does he want his spouse to be included as a primary beneficiary? We can either go no or yes. So do we want it just solely for the bloodline? We'll go yes, we'll include the spouse. Do you want the secondary, secondary beneficiary, which is going to be his children, to be bloodline or lineage? Now, that's important because, for example, if his spouse was a second spouse, we might say, uh-oh, no, and that would also exclude her children from that particular testamentary trust. Are there any Becker companies, etc.? Now, you're asking about, well, what happens if we don't want them to take? This is the spot. Are there any further terms and conditions? Yes, so we put in here, um, any child uh, beneficiary. And if you don't know what to put in, just contact us, put it up on our support centre. So any child beneficiary is not to become trustee or appointor until age 35 and is not to take uh, any capital until age 25. However, remember this is discretionary. The trustee may distribute income to that child. So we put that in and then that will now pop out. So if I have a look at the finish, and remember this is the huge, this is the moat. It also applies with your LYD will with testamentary trust if you want a more simpler version. So what I'm doing is I'm going to go in and just show you what it looks like. It'll pop up as a PDF now and then we can go down and see how that testamentary trust. That's the best way of doing this, building into as a gift there specifically. Otherwise, once you've done all the gifts, it'll end up being a residual beneficiary. So I will pop that little moat document. I'm not going to go through everything because it's got change of trustees for SMSFs, change of leading member funds, but I'm going to take us right down to the end and you'll see here um, we've got our last will and testament for John Smith. Remember, you just saw that. So I go through here, 
I've got the who the executive is. Remember, I had there we've got um, Max Smith, and then it goes to Sarah and Sarah. You just saw me do all of that sort of stuff. Now, the provision of advice is obviously from the accountants, initial administration. We've got the principal beneficiary, specific gifts. So Sally Smith survives me. That's the personal effects and clothing. Remember we did that? Now, here we go. This is just what we looked at, the testamentary trust. Max Smith survives me by 30 days. They take a full and complete interest in the following assets. An investment property at Cool in Queensland. The entire, this entitlement is to be directed into a testamentary trust only upon Max Smith's consent. Now, remember, because we didn't do it automatically, if we had done it automatically, then it's not there. The beneficiaries will extend to the primary beneficiary's bloodline and lineage children. With Max Smith as your pointer able to choose any successor, with Max Smith as a trustee or the director of the corporate trustee. And here, remember we wrote this, any child beneficiary is not to become trustee or pointer until age 35, and is not to take any capital until age 25. However, the trustee may distribute income to that child. And then we've got a whole lot of other stuff. So they're the T's and C's in relation to a testamentary trust, which will be created by the executor um, on the death after probate. So that's the system and that's the way it works. We could build huge big testamentary trust, but because we've got five or six here, it end up the estate would end up being probably maybe 250 pages, which is just too much for our client. That's why we put these T's and C's in there. It guides our trustee and that's exactly what we need to do. So that's how to put a testamentary trust with terms and conditions for children, and that would also apply for grandchildren as well.